You're listening to Nurture Your Zest. I'm your host, Ashley King, and I will introduce you to a wealth of interesting, fascinating individuals from all walks of life who will share their stories, how they've overcome challenges, and you will find out their top tips for success. Through this podcast, you can gain tips to grow and change your life and the way you see the world and help you to nurture your zest. Hello everyone. Today I've got Igor with me who I'm so excited to introduce you to. Igor is somebody that I personally am very inspired by. Um, He's a super cool dude with lovely manners, a really kind heart and he's extremely talented. So I'm really delighted to introduce you now. Igor, do you want to tell tell us about yourself? Hello, my name is Igor Tavares and also known as Pyfro and also I'm a dancer and also I do a multimedia work and performance as also so i'll call i'll say it i'll say to myself i'm a multimedia artist which which i wouldn't be expecting for me to be here today because since i started art i thought i would only be enjoying accessories only strictly art but then i started dancing then things start getting more interesting which that gave me that strive to push me further and further and further and to become like a also a ultimate human being, which pushed myself further beyond. Also, which that got me to learn more skills such as uh, fashion and um, also sc- cultures, which I think that just makes me who, who I am today. So, excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. I'm really excited to chat to you. So, Igor, originally you came from uh, Angola, is that correct? Mm-hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to come to the UK, um, how old you were and did you find it uh, difficult adjusting or adapting and what your experience has been like getting to know the UK? Oh, the the, the, uh, the experience, I'll say, it was for me, I wasn't, for some reason, I wasn't really uh, surprised or anything because for me, I got this personality where I just stayed in my little comfort zone. Which it, it was, it was, it was, it was alright. So there were certain moments were amazing, then certain moments were not. But it took me time to adapt living here in, in the UK, and especially how uh, English is not my first language, and also adapting the way the environment is in UK. But it's been amazing since growing up here, meeting new people, and especially creative ones and people which are driving me to push my greatest. My greatest, my greatest self. So yeah, I love that, and I love that when I when I see you and I see your friends, Igor, you have this mm-hmm. really like close, tight knit friendship groups mm-hmm. with amazing creatives like yourself who are doing really cool, interesting projects. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, have you met each other through being involved in different work, and have your natural interests brought you together? Or do you feel that you were already friends through school or other things? How did you form this tight friendship of, you know, free-spirited creatives doing amazing things? Um, I'll, I'll start. I'll start with uh, uh, Marcia. <laughs> with Marcia, I met him um, because I think our moms knew each other, but I think we, did, we didn't know each other back then. But I met Marcia when he was, uh, I think, twelve or thirteen. Uh, a gateway when um, I think it was couple, like years ago now, like seven years ago. That's how I met uh, Marcio. And since then, for some reason, we just we just because we just found out we both spoke the same language as well, so which that made things more exciting. And we danced together and found out that there there were styles that we knew about each other and we also wanted to teach. So we just teach the styles and just exchange exchange. And which that just bond that close a bond I mean bought uh bond closer within us and throughout then I just started asking me, You wanna hang out and start think of him as a little brother, see him as a little brother and and that's how the story began. And since then he always been following me and I've been a, a big influence for him and till today right now and also he inspires me a lot through what he's, what he's learning. So 
that's about it. <laughs> I think it's lovely to see your bond. It's really special having that uh, connection with somebody. I know for me as well, I moved to uh, the UK from South Africa, mm-hmm. age 14 as a teenager, and I found it so hard coming to a new country, mm. making friends. I was bullied at school. It was scary. Um, even things like you miss the nice sweets from home or, you know, you miss your friends, you miss the food, mm. all this kind of thing. So I definitely understand that meeting someone and having that connection can really make you feel welcomed that's really good so um both you and Marcio but but you are all uh, very talented and uh you know you you're able to sew and dance mm-hmm. and do art and installations and structures mm-hmm. which is all really exciting so I'd love to hear a little bit about how you found your passion for art um did you ever want to do anything else? Did you ever want to be uh, in a different career? Or, or how did you discover this passion and love for art? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, to be honest, because when I was in school, I just wanted to, in school, I think that was in school, back way back in primary school, when there was a moment where I managed to, do, I managed to draw this, this a cool shark and... Everyone was just everyone was shocked for some reason. And I was shocked myself because I didn't know I, I wasn't I wasn't expecting myself to draw something like that. And just how the how it was so sketched and just the drawing just looked really awesome. And even the t-shirt she was impressed herself. But all, all the but I had a competition because there was another guy. His name his name was Yusuf. He was all his art was amazing. So it was like me and him were like the best ones in the class. And I think that's where the st- the talent started flowing in and starting to inhabit as well. So, uh, but then throughout the uh, secondary school, I left it. I stopped drawing art for for a bit, which I started lacking, and had to get myself back together. But which I wasn't really interested. In. I had no passion for it back then. Back then, I was only interested in sports because I really love sports, especially athletics and long jump, etc., and sprint, basketball. I really love it so much because either. Because when I was in year seven, up to uh, year eleven, my dream was to be a basketball player. Because <laughs> I really, I really, I really, I really love the body. I really love uh, this moving about. Because it gets me so excited. Which that's why in dance, like, I have I have so much stamina and energy. Because I really get this a mysterious energy which I cannot stop. Which it takes me time to get tired as well. But then, but then again, back to back to art. <laughs> I think. The talent started more flowing in, in college when I did the uh, art and design and extend. That's when I thought, let me take art more seriously. And but I was supposed to do fashion design, which I wasn't able not to do because I had a, a little bit of argument argument for mom because she thought fashion is something else, so it wasn't the right uh, path for me, I guess. So I just continued in um, illustration, and through illustration. That's when I, I moved to a foundation degree, which was the uh, illustration and animation, which was uh, enjoyable. But then again, I realized through that year, my passion was uh, fine art because I, I love uh, its cultures and just painting most of the time. So my, so for me, I've been jumping through um, what you call this medias and creative fields just to find who I am, I guess, as a human being and trying to find my talents and that's what helped me to combine all these talents all together in one which now I can use it whatever how I, whatever how I like which people are surprised and they also want to know how I managed to just grow all these talents together so I think it's it's amazing how multi-talented you are and I do I do wonder how did you find that courage to try different things um would you say that having a mentor can be helpful have you had a mentor that's helped you through your life and through your journey as you've um explored different mediums of art and and dance um is there anyone who's kind of helped you along the way and nurtured that talent and that um confidence in yourself I think I think I'll say um my teach my teachers first first my teachers before way before I met um the mentors right now but I'll say uh, Barbara she was uh, my fashion teacher I re she really helped me push my fashion work and also Dave as well he was my teacher which I did uh, 
which I studied a Bernard's degree. He also pushed me to to push my illustrations and animations because I'm not that good at on uh, this show. This show, which even though even though when I work on it, it looks really amazing, but then it takes just a lot of work, a lot of stress as well. But but since then, I left throughout the years as well. Uh, Alan has been helping me through uh, giving me the experience and knowledge through his experience because he also studied fine art when he was young as well. And with Martin, he gives me his knowledge of experience through dance as well. So for me, I just can combine all the knowledge into a wisdom which helps me to use. So for, um, to interrupt that that energy into the life I, re- I live right now in the present and also help the the younger youths which I can see they go beyond talent even more than me so it's really important I think like you're saying there once you've learned something to to actually make the time to give back to the next mm-hmm. generation and help them along the way uh, mentoring can be so important and mm-hmm. I know I see you doing that with a lot of younger people as mm-hmm. well which is great so in terms of dance, do you find it an escape? What is it about it that stirs your emotion? Um, you've mentioned a lot about being interested in sport and movement and flexibility. Is it an expression? What is it about you that just excites you about dance? I'm not sure. <laughs> I, think, I think I'll say it's like, a, it's, it's like this sort of a, like beast. I'll, I'll say because when I realize in the rehearsals or soft rehearsals or performance, there's always a, a beast which I have to unleash and because also I realize that my movements are quite um quite animals all. So because you know you see how when they, uh, ballet or other contemporary dancers the way they dance they're more elegant, just really fragile and it's beautiful. But for my movements it really my movements it's all about power and beast is just destroy everything <laughs> it's quite destruction which that's that's what I love because I love releasing that strong energy out because either I'm not sometimes I can't tell if either I'm releasing out stress or depression but then also releasing that passion which makes me smile makes me smile as well so it gets me excited but that, that's what I can say for now but also I see dance as a Meditation, which I can get into my old, my own field of, uh, field of world, which that just let, lets my body become more relaxed and just at ease at the same time. So, it's really interesting to hear your thought process around dance. And you did mention depression, and I just wonder, do you find that uh, with among your peers, among your friends, uh, are you able to talk about? Uh, mental health much I mean I know that uh, for men expressing their feelings can be more difficult how do you find uh, actually having those conversations around mental health do you you have just said that that dance helps to release something and explore some of those emotions Mm -hmm. but would you say that are you able to have those those thoughts and and discussions with friends I do have uh, them uh, conversations and for um either with, uh, with Alan sometimes or with my friends. But most of the time, I usually keep, keep it to myself most of the time because cause at the same time I'm trying to f- fight them uh, emotions but then also I have to release it to people people that I know I'm close with and just because I know they might be going through what well, I'm going through as well but not saying much as well. So, But it's always good to use this... Uh, express it them feelings and um, I say it's always good to express it they know how they can help you in some way which that certain energy can trigger you to sort of uh, create a new talent for yourself and but when it comes to your anxiety I, I usually just I use that as a tool to to help me grow as a human being and also to not let it get to me as well because if, if I do then just my energy just goes down and just becomes really low. So I always keep myself bright and happy. But even if I'm bright, I always keep myself <laughs> really so. So do you have any uh, tips for anyone listening? So who maybe might be feeling down or um, 
maybe unsure about things, how will you encourage others to what we say on this podcast, nurture their zest, nurture mm. your zest. So that zest being, you know, passion and energy for life. And, and you've spoken about creative sparks and this kind of feeling of being unleashed. But how do you look after yourself? Uh, is it through perhaps uh, sport or the way you eat? Or do you have any things uh, for you that just make you feel connected with yourself and okay is there any tips that you would like to share with anyone listening uh i'll say everyone has their own ways of <laughs> everyone has their own ways of uh taking care of themselves and to bring yourself back to uh normal but i'll say for, for me or for, for me what i do i usually sleep a lot a lot which sleep helps me helps me helps me to bring back to my normal self because I, I believe sleep is something which you can turn off from this reality. Then you can wake up in your other dimension, which is, uh, I'll say, your dream. Or it could be something else. You can enter into another world which you don't realize, a, a world which you can be relaxed and your mind can just completely calm itself. Or either you can go out for a drug and just go for a nature which I think is peaceful, which is here the birds sing, and which that may relax you as well. Or you just treat yourself for food. Just, just these normal little things, because like, you don't have to do big things to get back to yourself. Or it's, it's always about the little things which matters, matters the most, I guess. Or either just call your best friend and have a long chat as well. So I can't really say much because everyone has their own ways. So that's the best thing I can give for now. So. That's great. Thank you. Um, so can you tell us, uh, recently there's been a lot of stuff in the press around uh, some comments that were made about Prince George dancing and ballet and boys who do ballet and boys who dance. And I wonder, as someone who is an accomplished mm-hmm. dancer, you know, you, you don't just dance, you do stilt walking and break dancing and all sorts of different types of dance. What do you say to comments around boys who dance? Have you experienced any bullying throughout your time uh, dancing or have you ever had to sort of stand up for yourself or others who, who are um, male dancers? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really... Yeah, I don't have any memory of that at the moment. <laughs> but, but, but for, for example, um, when I dance, I usually get... Um, good comments mostly all the time so which is sort of quite difficult to learn as well unless unless it's, it's our mentor you know one that tells like actual real honesty comments which we can learn from but mostly for the audience for me it's, it's quite hard to you know what's, what I'm missing and what if the movements were pure or not and if the if the performance was has hit them if they felt something from it so to be honest, I don't really get specific comments which triggers me so at the moment, so unless it's for my mentor, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to hear that you haven't had anyone say, you know, nasty things mm-hmm. like sometimes I think it's quite an old fashioned view actually that boys can't dance. Mm-hmm. And the strange thing is that many centuries ago it was only men who were allowed to dance, you know, mm-hmm. ballet was all performed by men. Um, so it's interesting that sometimes uh, there are, you know, uh, comments that are derogatory about dance. Mm. Um, but I do think that uh, it's really great to see how the world's changing and how views are changing. And um, that really excites me to see that there's a bigger world. It's it's different. Mm. Is there anything that you're excited about for the future? Um, any changes that maybe societal or projects you're working on or uh, things that you're you're looking forward to i know that you're involved in a lot of activism and i wondered what your views on that are and how you personally for yourself how you feel you can inspire that change at, at the moment uh well when i'm working because at the moment there's a uh, got projects working with other people so it's quite difficult for me to work on my uh my own individual projects, which this year I want to focus just to work on my solo, and I'm planning on a ex- exhibitions as well, which didn't, I don't know where the locations yet. But for me, one be for me I had 
got a lot of thoughts about this year because I really want things to. I'm trying not to be. Uh, you have to be selfish, but I'm not trying to be selfish as much as an artist because also I want to put myself out there more, not just always in the groups. Because I realized in the past work I always been in the groups, exhibitions or dance groups, but mostly I want to just. Uh, I just want to push myself this year a lot as solo artist. But then I cannot forget there's those people behind me who will be support me as well so I can support them. But also there's other things which um, I, I write poetry sometimes as well. And also trying to study uh, philosophy as well, which I do just these little hobbies at home. It's to keep me entertained and also just to learn more, which I can just... Uh, Combine them together for my art also and, and dance. So, on my free on my free time, I always try to learn more, 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 more. Even though maybe I may, because when I'm not doing art or dance, either I'm doing them or something else. So I always keep, try to keep myself active as much as I can. So that's really inspiring. I'm sure uh, it's it's great for lots of people to hear actually how how keen you are and enthusiastic you are to constantly improve and learn and grow. And I know that I resonate with a lot of that. It's nice to know that you're working towards something or towards a dream or things like this. So, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, I wonder, can you tell us, have you ever read a book that has changed your life? Is there anything that you've, like, uh, you mentioned you're into poetry, whether it's poetry or a fictional book or um, any kind of book, is there anything that just keeps you... Um, passionate and helps you to have those dreams uh, at the moment I've been I got a lot of books now which I'm surprised because <laughs> I used to I used to read and I used to hear books but now since this year I've got quite a lot, a lot of books at home but mostly them are just art books or either poetry but I haven't found any books that inspire me now to I haven't found any that gave me that inspired yet yet <laughs> but for now just reading them just as a as a tool just to give me ideas and more words words to write so at the moment just i'm just reading just entertain myself so sounds good so if there was a um number one tip that you could give to anybody to how to stay curious you know how to um improve themselves or grow what would your number one tip be I'll say always be yourself. <laughs> always be yourself. Do not let no one tell you what to do because you are your own self and you try to push yourself and yours should be confident, confident no matter where you are in which your environment because you know your own skills more than anyone. So all I can say, keep pushing and keep be- being yourself. Always have a big smile and keep your chest up so... That's all I can say for now. (laughs) I like that. And I like how you just kept your chest up when you said that. It's awesome. Um, Okay. And if there was one word that you could say, just one that you feel defines your life or your views about how you feel about yourself, uh, how you feel about your projects, how you face your life. What is your number one word that gets you up out of bed in the morning or helps you approach things? Uh. I think I use the word. I got this habit of using. I think it's absolute. <laughs> so that's how I see it in my theory. For me, everything is absolute. Everything has to be done and has to be has to has to win. So even if I even if I lose, then I can learn something. But even if I win, then I can, can keep going forward. So. So everything is absolute. Okay. Awesome. So that's three words. <laughs> but yeah, absolute. Okay, cool. We'll go with that. So um, if people want to find you online, they want to see your art, they want to see your dance, where can we find you? How can we hear more about you? If anyone who's listening is interested to know more about Igor Tavares. So either you can follow my personal account. Is, I mean, your personal account on Facebook, uh, Igor Tavares, or... Instagram and my personal Instagram, which is called uh, Quiet Consciousness. Or if you're interested more in my artwork, it's called Spyfro. Just type Spyfro or Facebook Spyfro or either Instagram Spyfro, which is S P H Y F R O. Sounds great. And if uh, 
if people want to find out about the dancing you do, they can find out more on your Capua Gate page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you want to just say where they, uh, what the spelling for that is? For Capua is C A P U A, and just the gate G A T A E. <laughs> Brilliant. And is that Facebook and Instagram? Yes. It's uh, for for now. It's more Facebook, but soon will be more actively on Instagram as well. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, and thanks thank for coming for online me. today. Thank you very much. Thanks. You've been listening to Nurture Your Zest. You can find us online on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Nurture Your Zest. If you've liked today, please subscribe. You can also leave us a review if you're feeling extra kind. Today's podcast has been made available through the kind sponsorship of TL Multimedia and That Branding Company. We look forward to catching up with you again soon as you learn to nurture your zest.